We're headed into the 10th day of the AJ Armstrong trial. Armstrong is charged with killing his parents in their southwest Houston bedroom in July of 2016. This is his third jury trial. Prosecutors have called upon 27 witnesses. There are no cameras allowed in the courtroom. And so we have a team of journalists covering this trial from all angles. We're calling our coverage the bench. KPRC2 reporter Rilwan Belogan and investigative producer Jason Wynn are members of the bench roster. Both are joining us this morning live from outside the courthouse. We're wrapping up another busy week. Do you think prosecutors will rest their case uh, this morning? Good morning, gentlemen. Zach, good morning. That's the plan, we believe. Prosecutors said yesterday that they had just one witness to bring to the witness stand, and that took the entirety of the day there. Yeah, we're going to pull this up here. We're going to switch out our nice little artwork here because this is one of the witnesses that was called up, and I thought this guy right here was interesting, Rowan, just because he spent a lot of time on... AJ's brother, Josh. Tell mm -hmm. us more about that. And this person, as we point to him, is Dr. Ian LaRoe. He's a forensic psychiatrist from um, Phoenix, Arizona, brought in for this trial. He looked at all of the Armst or Josh Armstrong's medical records. That's, again, AJ's older brother. And some of the text messages between the family to what he says, try to get an understanding of the family dynamics while also going through Josh's medical records itself. Yeah, let's talk about those medical records a little bit because there were a lot of records. I mean, they brought out books about this thing mm -hmm. uh, and, and just laid them out right in front of the juries. Uh, one of the takeaways that I actually took from that was during the cross-examination and, and a little bit during the prosecutor's part, too, it was brought out that Josh did not believe that his brother, AJ, committed the murders of his parents, Don and Antonio Armstrong mm -hmm. Sr. Mm -hmm. And the importance, I want to add, of the significance here about this doctor talking about Josh is because in the last few trials, the defense have alluded to Josh being the alternative suspect. They just have to, they don't necessarily say Josh is it, but they just have to put in the air that it is not agent. That's what the defense has been doing. And so when the prosecutors bring in this witness in, they have the witness testifying to a number of things that happened to Josh. And they said all of this, he didn't have a quote, psychotic psychosis until after the parents murder, saying his mental health really started to suffer and deteriorate after that moment. And that was really about the schizophrenia that mm -hmm. came up after the fact that they were mm -hmm. able to get those records on all after the murder. But they're like Zach talked about earlier we had 27 witnesses we had a couple more that we want to get to uh including the original prosecutors in the 2019 first case. Rowan, you did a demonstration on Wednesday. Yeah. I thought it was really important. Show us what you did. Let's talk about it. The original prosecutors from the 2019 case, not the prosecutors on the case right now, they were brought up back to testify because the defense brought up some pictures shown one of the uh, the sergeants there, um, Lester, or excuse me, not the sergeant, no, one the of the prosecutors, prosecutors Lester Blizzard, of watch, had one of the shirts that AJ was wearing, okay? the night that he was interviewed by investigators that the significance about this shirt AJ was wearing they say is obviously just last month an investigative uh, a sergeant there found that there was blood underneath the name tag so what they demonstrated and had that prosecutor confirm in those pictures shown in the courtroom was that that prosecutor scrunched up that shirt in this way here and he admitted to saying that yes he scrunched up the shirt it looks like it and so the significance is it scrunched up the shirt right on top of of the name tag and and Jason, you know exactly yeah. the importance of that. Yeah, there. because I mean, Lester Blizzard, he he admitted to it. He didn't have gloves on while he was actually touching that shirt, and it was right after he touched the pillows. Mm -hmm. And part of bloody that, pillows, we yeah, should the add. bloody bloody pillows. And and his own partner, the lead in this case, John Brewer, showed was shown pictures and that and that little name tag right up there was peeled up and he even he said out a little stand. thing yep yeah he mm -hmm. said on the stand that it appears that it wasn't completely sealed and that all goes back to sergeant rossi mm -hmm. here from montgomery county because she was the one they kind of said hey she believes that some of this blood transfer on this sticker was a, a transfer. It was pretty much cross-contamination, she said, one of those stains. But the other stain, she believes it was blood that kind of dried in the air and landed on AJ's shirt. She testified that AJ was the one who put the bloody pillow on top of both of his parents. And when she was over there to talk about um, 
how the pillow was placed on Antonio Sr. She said that while Antonio Sr. was still breathing, there was blood coming down his face, and that blood uh, he breathed on, she believes, AJ, and it dried in air and somehow landed on his shirt, and that visitor sticker picked it up, but there was no blood on his shirt at the time and those prosecutors those original prosecutors well we, we shouldn't say no blood there was a number of or people who said they didn't witness or see any yes. blood on him when they looked at him and this is when the um Cel sergeant celestina rossi here said that she did find it under those um visitor badge and this sticker. is all kind of coming from this area here because they really brought everything oh, yeah. out for this robot. they brought a number of props prosecutors this is the first time they've done it in any of the trials here they brought significant props here to kind of demonstrate to the jurors here exactly what they believe might have happened. So they reconstructed some stairs, as you can see in this demonstration here, and then also brought in what they said was a sort of makeshift bed yeah. here, a king size bed, as you can show by the pictures here, and also some two mannequins to represent Don and Antonio Sr. And, and one of the things that uh, I think was important during Cross was Rick DiToto came out with this, a water bottle. Mm -hmm. um, and it was one of those spray water bottles. And mm -hmm. what he was saying is if Antonio Armstrong Sr. was actually breathing out and this blood was coming out from him, and that if Sergeant Rossi's theory was correct, wouldn't, start, wouldn't he have more blood on him around the chest area and waist area? And that was something they didn't really get into. Well, Rossi did say that there's the different types of uh, fluids, yeah. which is like blood is not the same as water and that it's not as thin or thick. I forget the terminology to allude into maybe that's what happened. But anyways, this whole demonstration was a big new thing. So when we all walked into the courtroom and we saw these props were brought in, we were all like, what's happening here. And I just kind of want to build on this blood a little bit more because the Houston Forensic Science Center was up right after Sergeant Rossi and they also they brought in one of their managers that dealt with testing the blood and it seemed like she was a little caught off guard, maybe offended, I don't know if that's the right word to use, that she thought, hey, we tested all of this stuff and we didn't find anything on the shirt at mm -hmm. all. So she kind of talked about that. Fill us in on some of that testimony. She talked about the blood itself and then she really mentioned itself that they didn't she she admitted and others admitted they didn't test underneath the visitor sticker itself but they did test the shirts they did ch test the pants AJ was wearing the night he was interviewed by detectives they did check the slippers and none of those items they found blood on it or any DNA to that effect and that's really threw them off and we got about two minutes here. left Rowan so I want to get to the sergeant here real mm -hmm. quick because sergeant uh, Kenneth Dagnall he was he, he's not pictured here at all but he was uh we have some video of him if you want to pull it up sam but sergeant dagnall was really supposed to put all of this together for the prosecutors rowan you were in there to see his testimony what did you pick out from him now sergeant um kenneth dagnall he was the lead investigator homicide investigator in this case here and what he was talking about is just really exactly what happened the night of what their investigation entire in its entirety was about and he said that nothing in their investigation led to the suspect was outside of the home and that's what defense really picked up on they asked him multiple times well did you interview neighbors did you check for outside surveillance video and he said we didn't again because the evidence showed to us that everything happened inside the home yes and then uh, one last moment we caught yesterday uh, the family uh, right when Rick DeToto he was pretty much thinking he was gonna get to be able to present mm -hmm. the defense's side so after lunch we caught a moment with the family want to show you it to you right now uh, you can see the whole family was hugging it roll on we heard some some prayers that were actually they um, were singing some gospel songs there and then and if, if the video is still up AJ is in the middle of that hug there and then behind him near him is lead defense attorney Rick DeToto and all of the family members there in embracing AJ at that point and we expect a large number of family members to return today when we expect the defense to begin their side of this case yeah, what do you expect Rick to do when he when they finally get to present their side who, who do you think they're gonna call up. If pass is prologue here, we know that in the previous trials, he's called on a number of family members, including AJ's sister, Kira, who was at the opening, but hasn't returned since. Since again, she might likely testify. We do expect some other family members to testify in this trial in itself for the defense here. And so things are going to get started here momentarily at nine o'clock. So we are going to wrap things up and make sure we are in courtroom to get things all for you. And we'll have so much more throughout the day. This is Jason Wynn. I'm Roman Below.
Doug and jo Zach, we're going to send things back to you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Very interesting. We, of course, will stay tuned to all developments. Thank you again. Uh, if you go to our website, you can see on the bottom of your screen, that's clicktohouston.com, the bench, you'll find a timeline of the case from the night of the murders to present day, a playlist we've produced called The Anatomy of a Trial that explains key legal concepts in video short form, detailed archives from the first two trials in 2019 and then in 2022, and full episodes of the bench produced and streamed to date on KPRC2+.